तत् परम पर्याय विद्महे ज्ञानलिंगेश्वराय धीमहि तन्नो गुरु सचोदयते ओम ओम योग महर्षि डॉक्टर स्वामी गीतानंद गिरी गुरु महाराज की जय welcome back to another round of our saturday morning scintillating saturdays and it's always beautiful to get up in the morning and see you all join me in these sessions from all over the world always nice to have the immediate responses from all of you committed dedicated yoga sadhakas dedicated loving yoga sadhakis each and every one of you who is striving to make yoga an important and vital component of your life my gratitude appreciation and blessings to each and every one of you we have been looking at the hasta mudras the hand gestures the hasta mudras are an expression they are a manifest expression of our intent what is it that we have in our mind what is the intent in our mind we are communicating that intent through the hasta mudras so they are not just ordinary gestures but they are gestures of intent let that sink in a bit because many people wonder how these things work how is it you just put different fingers together and so much can happen well the proof lies in the practice and over the past 6 weeks those who have been exposed to the yoga step by step in team 52 we have been receiving amazing feedback from those who have been practicing when you put into practice you start to experience the power of intent is related to the power of choice and is related to our prefrontal cortex the ajna chakra the ajna bindu the prefrontal cortex the region associated with our chitta akasha that space of consciousness chit akasha chit akasha in which lord shiva is said to dance his cosmic dance chidananda roopam he is because of that in that chit akasha chit akashatil arpudha mah a beautiful composition is there sadanand tandavam sayyam padam varam tad jagannath sadanand 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 tandavam always dancing sada anand tandavam in the chidda akasha chidda akashathil that is the space associated with this prefrontal cortex the power of choice the power of intent and what are you telling yourself with the hasta mudras i have a certain intent i want to channelize the flow of my mind force the manas i want to channelize through that my pranic force the energy that connects us as an individual with the cosmos that prana 
the manas and the prana i want to channel eyes and how do i put it into expression i have the intent i have that ichcha shakti ichcha shakti that comes from the buddhi the vijnanamaya kosha how do i put it into actuality how do i manifest it how do i communicate it by the hasta mudras and you are communicating it heartfully because the hands are the extension of the heart heart hands are the extension of the heart and so heartfully and artfully because they are very beautiful the artfulness of the mudras is what people think it is they think oh the beauty of the gesture produces the result not necessarily the beauty of the gesture the intent of the gesture and i think one of the greatest powers we have is the power of intent be it in yoga abhyasa the practice of the yogic techniques or mantra yoga sadhana or the laya yoga sadhana with the energies the potent dormant latent energies awakening them experiencing them and enabling them to move us from individuality to universality the power of intent so when we do the chin mudra we are expressing the intention that i want to communicate within myself by sending a signal to the chin bindu of the aprakasha bindu aprakasha bindu is your is the focal point of consciousness related correlated to your nervous system especially the brain stem pons and medulla that has the respiratory center normally respiration is automatic involuntary automatic autopilot that is the reflexive reflexive living reflexive you are just refle- you are just a reactionary reflex based you want to move into a reflective and that is where you have to shift from the back of the head to the front of the head when you do the chin mudra when you do the chin mudra you are sending an impulse an intentional impulse an impulse of intention intentional impulse of intention and double words there to the chin bindu in the lower part of your brain stem saying i want to breathe primarily into the lower part of my lungs which is called adam pranayama you are also saying i want to connect to consciousness chit when you do the chin maya mudra you have bound the consciousness you want to bind yourself into consciousness that is the intent you are communicating and you are communicating with the chin maya bindu in the middle part of the respiratory center focusing on madhyam pranayama the mid chest intercostal breathing and as jain commented yesterday in our yoga step by step study group is it also connected to lord hanuman opening up his chest to see to show rama and sita and lakshmana in it the mid chest breathing opening up your heart becoming heart full there is so much of hatefulness in the world today we need to move from hatefulness to heartfulness open the heart don't close it when you do the chin maya bindu and you work on madhyam pranayama you are opening up your heart you are becoming a heartful human being the heartfulness comes into your day to day 24 hour living you become big hearted you become brave hearted when we perform the adi mudra the thumb in the center the other fingers curled around the causal the source is always hidden in the sensory world 
you have to look a bit hard. You have to disentangle the senses to understand the cause. Varuna Bhagavan is sending some rain down. The Adi Mudra is where you are sending out the heartful intention to the cosmos. You are saying, I want to connect with that highest, the Adi, in that state of Samadhi, Sama Adi. And even the Divine is blessing us with this rain today. I think I'm going to shift inside because it's nice to be blessed but not nice to be wet in the winter. Give me a few minutes. Yes, we are shifting in. Bear with me for this small change, but uh, if it were a drizzle, I would stay out there. It's a bit more than a drizzle today. So we'll come in. I was contemplating being in here earlier. And now you get to you get to also see a bit of Swamiji and Ammaji in the background there. And they said, this guy is leaving us out of the picture. So we need to get into the picture with him. Like that Trimurti image we have. Coming back. Adi Mudra. Adi Mudra is enabling us to set the intention to connect to the highest in the Samadhi. Sama Adi. Samadhi. That is what we are working towards. Moving from the individuality to the cosmology. Individuality to universality. The small I to the big I. That is the movement we are making. And in this movement, the gesture Adi Mudra is enabling us to connect with what is called the Adi Bindu. So again, the respiratory center Aprakasha Bindu, which is the focal point of consciousness, the Bindu connected to the respiratory center. What it is having is Chin Bindu, Chinmaya Bindu, Adi Bindu. Three parts. Chin Mudra activates Chin Bindu. Chinmaya Mudra activates Chinmaya Bindu. Adi Mudra activates Adi Bindu. The Adi Bindu, when it is activated, the energy is flowing primarily into the upper chest, Adhyam Pranayama. And when you breathe into this area, it is a very conscious decision to breathe because normally you are breathing into the lower part of the lungs, the diaphragmatic region, the abdominal region, which is basically survival mode, automatic survival mode governed by the brainstem saying, keep you alive, keep you alive, keep you alive, keep you alive. And that's what it is doing, keeping you alive by basal breathing, basal, foundational, basal, diaphragmatic Breathing is enough. Mid chest is already a choice to open the heart. And the upper chest is a very strong choice that you want to open up to the higher consciousness flowing through the higher nervous system and the cranial nerves. The cranial nerves, the special senses, the cerebral cortex that makes us human. Which is why we say Adam Pranayama, the lower chest breathing works on the reptilian part of the brain. Madhyam Pranayama works on the mammalian part. Mid chest, mammary gland, mammals. Another way to remember it. Find these uh, tricks to remember these things in your head. Adi Mudra working on Adhyam Pranayama and you are opening up to the higher consciousness so that it can flow through you. The Saptapadam the seven higher states of consciousness, they start to open up to you. But if you are stuck with basal breathing, which is survival mode, 
you have no time for the higher. And that is what Abraham Maslow talks about, the hierarchy of needs. You have to fulfill the basic needs, then you can aspire for the higher. And that is why you have to start with Adam, build through Madhyam, and then you extend yourself and uplift yourself through the Adhyam. Chin, Chinmaya, Adi. Now comes the fourth. Because always in Indian philosophy, we will say there are three of these and then we will say there is something more than that. And you say, oh, now I know it. And then they will say there is something even more than that. An example is the states of consciousness. We talk about wakefulness. Jagrat. Wakefulness is the first state. Jagrat. We say, okay, fine. Then the next one, Swapna. Dream. Where you see all your dream girls. Swapna Sundari is come in Swapna. Then Shushupti, where you connect with the cosmos but in an unconscious manner. In deep sleep, we connect with that universality, we connect with the cosmos, but we don't know it because we are sleeping. Okay. That is why when you get up in the morning, you should feel refreshed because you have <laughs> connected yourself with the cosmos. But you don't know you have done it because it was in Shushupti. Then they say, okay, Jagrat, Swapna, Shushupti. Then they say there is a fourth one, Thuriya. And you say, ah, finally I know the secret. And then they say, I'm sorry, there's one more. Thuriya Atita, beyond the Thuriya also. This is a typical Indian philosophy situation. You Just when you think you know it all, they'll say there's something more than that. Beautiful, beautiful, continuous learning, uninterrupted continuous learning, which is what life's all about. So, Chin, Chinmaya, Adi for the low, mid and upper parts giving us the basis of living, opening up the heart so we can connect with others, opening up the upper part of the lungs so that you can connect with the cosmos and then yoga says bring it all together because yoga is the original bring it all together. Unity, harmony, and understanding. The three cosmic principles that Swamiji talks about. You have to bring it all together. It has to all come together in one yujjate anena yiti yoga. It all has to come into a yuj. It has to be yoked together. So you have low chest breathing, mid chest breathing, upper chest breathing. And what does yoga say? Bring it all together. Put the pieces together. Huh? In a world where we are being blown into pieces, yoga offers us the opportunity to put the pieces back together. Yoga is the glue that can help us regain wholesomeness. We have become piecemeal to become a wholesome, holistic human being, individually, socially, spiritually, you need to come together. And so what do we do? Mahat Yoga Pranayama. Mahat Yoga Pranayama. Maha, the grand, great. Whenever we want to tease people for having too big an ego, we say Maha Maha Puba. The Swamiji used to say that guy is a Maha Puba. Grand, big, hot air balloon. A lot of grand, hot air balloons out there. We must make sure we don't become one. That is the self-inquiry, Atma Vichara, that is important. Mahat means the grand, great. Yoga is unification, unified pranayama. So it is the pranayama through which a grand unification is occurring. The lower part, the middle part and the upper part. The lower part of the lungs that is supplying the lower part of the body, the middle part of the lungs to the middle part of the body, upper part of the lungs to the upper part of the body, it is all being unified. Lower part of the lungs connected to the reptilian 
brain. Middle part connected to mam mammalian brain. Upper part connected to the human brain being brought together. Lower part connected to the gross embodiment, sthula sharira. Middle part connected to the subtle embodiment, sukshma sharira. And the upper part connected to the causal embodiment, the source, karana sharira. All being brought together. Grand unified breath. Mahat Yoga Pranayama. You want to bring it all together. You have done each one separately. You have learned each one separately. You have focused on each one separately. And now you bring it all together. All the pieces come together into that unity, harmony and understanding. And how do you do that? The two Adi Mudras, you bring them together at your navel. Okay? You bring them together at your navel center. The Nabi. This Nabi. Bring both of them together. The knuckles should be touching. Okay? So the knuckles are touching. The two Adi Mudras come together. And with the knuckles touching at the navel like this, the inner part, the little finger part should be touching the navel. Okay? Now many people, they do this, they do this. I have seen all sort of stuff here. This, this, this. It ha the knuckles have to be touching. You want to unify everything. The energy flows on the right and the left are being brought together. And when you perform this Mahat Yoga Mudra, it is also called Brahma Mudra. Mahat Yoga Mudra, also called Brahma Mudra. Now, Brahma Mudra, you have to be careful. There is also the head turning gesture. So, that is a Brahma Mudra for the head. This is a Brahma Mudra for the hand. So, this is a Hasta Mudra. A Brahma Mudra, which is a Hasta Mudra. When you perform this and now you start to focus your mind, your intent, channelizing all your thought, word and deed into one flow of unitiveness. You are breathing into the low, the mid and the upper part of the lungs. And as you breathe out, the low, the mid and the upper part of the lungs. Breathing in low, mid and upper part of the lungs. Breathing out low, mid and upper part. Once more, low, adhama, mid, madhyama, high, adhyama. Breathing out low, adhama, mid, madhyama, high, adhyama. A grand unified breathing occurring when you do this Mahat Yoga Mudra. Mahat Yoga Mudra, also called the Brahma Mudra of the hands, the Hasta Mudra, which is Brahma Mudra. When you do this, you are connecting with the navel center. The navel center is our psychic umbilical cord. It is the psychic umbilical cord that connects us with the cosmos. Just as we had a physical umbilical cord connecting us with our mother, physical mother. The Manipura Chakra, the Nabi, is the psychic umbilical cord that connects us with the cosmic mother, Jagat Janani, which we so beautifully sing when we talk of Adi Parashakti. Jagat Janani, Jagat Matam, Adi Parashakti Palayamam, Jagat Janani, Jagan Matam Adi Para Shakti Palayamam Adi Para Shakti Palayamam Adi Para Shakti Palayamam Agilandeshwari Palayamam Agilandeshwari Palayamam Adi Para Shakti 
ஆதி பாலயமாம் ஆதி பராசக்தி பாலயமாம் அகிலாண்டேஸ்வரி பாலயமாம் அகிலாண்டேஸ்வரி பாலயமாம் ஹே ஜக ஜனனி ஜகன்மாதாம் ஆதி பராசக்தி பாலயமாம் ஜக ஜனனி ஜகன்மாதாம் ஆதி பராசக்தி பாலயமாம் ஆதி பராசக்தி பாலயமாம் ஆதி பராசக்தி பாலயமாம் பியூட்டிஃபுல் வே பியூட்டிஃபுல் வே தட் வி எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் த டிவைன் மதர் the universal divine mother who has given us this grand opportunity to be born human being what a beautiful moment what a beautiful moment when we can manifest with the grace of the divine mother the navel center nabi connects with that that is why the manipura chakra the manipura chakra connects us with the cosmos all laya yoga practices have to focus on this manipura the nabi that is the source of sound that is where the sound starts that is why always ah uh, it is a sound down in the base ah uh, o oh, mm that is where the sound starts ah uh, what a beautiful place where the energy starts the sound energy the nada the vibrational force starts at the navel center that is why the great tyagaraja swamigal the great composer in south india he tells us when he talks about saptaswara nabi hrikantarasan a sound should go from the nabi start in the sound uh, nabi navel center comes through the heart comes through the throat modified in the oral apparatus and then through the nose it goes up five points nabi he kanta rasana nasa five aspects of sound production in nada yoga nabi he kanta rasana nabi he kanta rasana nasa dulayanto nabi he kanta rasana nasa dulayanto so billu sarataswaram மகர்ஷி பதஞ்சலி லோகா where you are connected with the universal transcendental wisdom tasya saptadha pranta bhumi pragya is how maharishi patanjali tells that to us this navel center is the source and that is why lord brahma the creative principle of the universe is related to this and that is why when we place the mudra here the mahat yoga mudra also gains the name Brahma Mudra. Brahma is said to come out of the navel lotus, the lotus that comes out of Lord Vishnu, the energy of sustenance. Again, Abraham Maslow, hierarchy of needs. When your basic needs are met, creative impulses will flow. When Vishnu has been stabilized, then the Brahma influence can manifest. this is what human life is about you need to fulfill those basic needs and that is why vishnu is reclining on the ananta huh? the endless infinite padmanabh swami he is called one of the richest temples in south india padmanabh swami padma nabh padma is lotus nabh is navel so he is the lord from whose navel comes the lotus and on that lotus blooms lord brahma 
these are beautiful metaphors of how these energies are manifesting through us when you bring the two adi mudras together knuckles touching and you place them at the navel area this brahma mudra mahat yoga mudra enables us to bring about a grand unification of the lower middle and upper parts of the lungs lower middle and upper parts of the human body of our existence of our nervous system and we can have an opportunity to become all one yoga is unity in that unity occurs harmony and in that state occurs understanding of who we truly are a beautiful flow is happening through these mudras and people think oh i learned them last week and i know it all <laughs> as einstein said there are only two things that are infinite in this universe one is the universe and second is human stupidity and he said i'm not too sure about the universe whether it is infinite or not but human stupidity is definitely i love einstein for his understanding of the human being we think we know it all i heard that name i know it i once was an examiner for some students we had taught and when we asked them to do this brahma mudra the guy had his hands apart like this and i was telling i said you know this is totally wrong there's no way i can let you get through this exam and he's like sir what is the difference here or here i'm like you know first of all unless the points are touching unless all of it's connected it's not a mudra unconnected gestures are not mudras they have to be connected connectiveness is the link that is happening here and i said the thing is that first you will do like this you will teach your student they will start doing this and then after 20 years you will find brahma mudra done in the back and then someone will say dr ananda taught us to do brahma mudra with our hands behind the back that is how mutation occurs in teaching and be careful because in many traditions mutation has occurred and so people are doing teachings that have no nothing to do with what they actually were you have to know what you are doing swami ji always said he said never take anything just because i say it question it practice it experience it and then you know it not just because the guru said no it's not blind belief at all take what the guru says take it in the ear shravana you have to listen you have to hear listen that is the first part it has to then go in manana you have to contemplate it you have to experience it you have to practice it you have to work on it and then niridhyasana occurs where you become established in most people they don't want to take what the guru said so it stops here itself second they take it in they don't think about it they just blindly follow it take it in let it go in work on it practice it does this happen does this effect occur am i having that experience does it make me a better human being ask yourself these questions work on it and then become established in it Nidhi Dhyasana is the highest state as Ramana Maharishi said. The best asana is Nidhi Dhyasana. You are established in those teachings. You have become the teachings themselves. There is no duality. There is no dichotomy between you and the teachings anymore. When we do Brahma Mudra, we are bringing together the effect of the Chin, Chinmaya and Adi Mudra. We are bringing all the three together. and at that point that grand unification occurs what beautiful teachings what beautiful aspirations to work towards and that is why the teachings that swami ji has given us teachings that have been sustained and codified by amma ji those are teachings that we need to work on these are not teachings to just be read these are not teachings just to be watched on my youtube channel or on my facebook live on saturday mornings do i love to see all of you there these are teachings to be practiced these are teachings to be experienced because yoga is ultimately an experiential art and science 
It has to be anubhava. It has to be experienced. No second-hand experience. No experience of somebody else. Your own personal experience. May we all be blessed to manifest that. And the rain has stopped. And it says, Dr. Ananda, you have gone on long enough. Yeah? You know, you always have the next Saturday coming. And I've tried to bring this together with what we are doing in our yoga step-by-step -step, Team 52. Team 52 is amazing team. I love the energy. Beautiful sharing happening in our group. And the way people are taking it seriously. Nothing can make me happier than when people take their practice seriously. When they start to live yoga. That is the best part. Two questions before I end. One question was for Aprakasha Mudra, when we do the swallowing action, whether there should be a specific hand gesture. Uh, you don't need a specific hand gesture. The Aprakasha Mudra is its own mudra. And so Aprakasha Mudra can be used with any of the other mudras as well as without any other mudras. So it is its own and it fits into everything. Okay, so Aprakasha Mudra, whenever you are breathing in, swallow so that you can hold the breath. That is the Aprakasha Mudra. And the second, I wanted to appreciate uh, Niru uh, Parashar Sharma for her beautiful commentary I received this morning on Shavasana and how by practicing Shavasana, we are actually moving from Shava to Shiva. And a very beautiful uh, concept she has so beautifully brought out in uh, something she shared from her contemplation. I love this type of contemplation that all of you are having. When we can contemplate these practices, when we can contemplate these concepts, we elevate ourselves. When we elevate ourselves, we elevate the world. Elevate yourself. Elevate yourself. And you elevate the world around you. The world in which you live. That is Manushya Dharma. Manushya Dharma is the responsibility of being human. May we manifest that Manushya Dharma. Om Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Sarve Janaha Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you so much. Danyavadaha. Till next time.